Today we're going to look at this awful code, what's wrong with it, and how to fix it. Hey, please like, comment, and subscribe to this video because I'm having to re-record my dang audio for this entire video. So I wanted to review Pirate Software's code here, and sorry that I'm going to have to be inserting audio, but let's go ahead and take a look at it here. We have uh, this huge array of indexes that he calls. This isn't really a bad idea for making games, and I'm going to give him some credit here. Eight years ago, uh, AI wasn't exactly available, so making very complex structures like I'm about to show wasn't as easy. This is how a lot of indie games, game developers do make their games behind the hood. The code is just not pretty, but there are reasons for doing it a different way, which I'm going to hopefully be able to explain here. Anyways, one thing pirate software neglects is that game maker does have an inspector every game engine modern game engine that people use publicly uses some sort of inspection tool for you to be able to see variables he neglects this and lies about this constantly so i'm going to start here with a simple struct which also is available in game maker and so here we would do if we're trying to mimic what pirate software would do something like a value and a tag but the problem with this is, you see here, when we put it in the inspector, we just have a bunch of values because Pirate Software doesn't use the inspector. He writes it this way where he would just initialize everything with a zero and the index. So here we would write zero, index equals zero, or the int, ind the int equals zero and the index equals zero, and the int is zero, one, two, three. Zero would be something like cha cha. Two would be something like slide. One or zero would be something like cha cha. Two one would be something like slide. Two would be something like take, and three would be something like back. For example, the problem with this is we could just be using a system of events that doesn't require any of this crap. He also claims that Game Maker is the problem, and the Game Maker language is what's preventing him. When you can see here that you can clearly make a struct in Game Maker language in the Game Maker Studio. He's completely dodging the fact that it's completely doable to not do this. The part I'll give him some props on is eight years ago we didn't have AI, so he's more likely to write it a bad way. Eight years ago, most indie game, game devs didn't have tons of structs in their game, and they may have written it a similar way to how he did. Now the other problem with how he hard-coded it is you can't do this in Inspector. So I'll try to show here how I would do his thought process in the Inspector. I would place a tag for each location because in his code he has tons of locations and even for some reason the inventory. So I would take something like the location pool and then do pool one, two, three, but that's redundant because now we're just reusing the elements, elements zero, one, two, three as one, or zero, one, two as one, two, three. So zero equals one, one equals two, and two equals three, which makes this so redundant. So what we'll do here is we'll make a, we'll move this tag above each element. That way each element has its own tag. And to do that, we'll create a second struct. And this is a bit confusing, but just bear with me, or just hang on with me. Tagged story group is the new struct, which has a tag for each of the story blocks. The story blocks is another array with a int value and what happens. So basically we have a array of arrays here, but the first one can be called pool, and then each block can give us a value and what happens. And what happens would be similar to what Pirate Software writes here in his code and his documented crap. So I'm gonna fill this out just for an example here. And then we would ideally do something with the value as well. So now I'm gonna add something called an event name. And what that's gonna basically let us do is use the event name to find the event. So we'll just need to find the location and then the event we want. So we have the location here, pool. And instead of this crap here, like Pirate Software wrote, we would just say no to Joe, right? Because that's the event. This one, we could do something like whistle event. And then something like this, we could do, I think I did whistle PPP. We'll see what I do here. Whistle PPP. <laughs> there we go. And now we can finally remove the what happens, the BS that Pirate Software would write, that's redundant. 
and I'm just going to hide this story blocks here in, spec in inspector because it's already being called in the tagged story group struct. So now I'm going to give you an example of how we're going to search for this and then eventually turn this into a function. So from example A to example B, I just need to turn this into some sort of way to search for the tag for the location. So I'm actually going to cheat here and use AI because writing for loops is always a pain in the neck. And now all we have to do is take this target tag here and serialize it so we can see it in the inspector. Um, again, pirate software doesn't seem to understand this very simple concept that would not require AI uh, serializing things for inspector use so you can reuse them. So now we'll just make the target tag pool and we could call this location. Now we need to find the event name. So I'm going to go ahead and add in first event here, or it could just be event name. And we'll find one of the event names here, not to Joe. And we'll just copy paste that as the default event name. So we'll find the location pool and the event not to Joe. All right. And now this is going to search for the event uh, name and the event uh, location. Now if we run this we can see in the uh, debug console that we have a match to pool and a match to not to Joe. Ideally we would do something with this value then that would change the state of the event. Finally we'd move that block of code into a new function. This would allow us to call it anywhere in the game and reuse it as many times as we need. So now I've created our final example, example C. We would do something like call each of these examples something different like event name or maybe like events uh event and then event function for this script i guess and then in our uh event script or example c here we'll add we're going to switch around location and event here so it makes more sense then you would just add the location and event so the location is the tag for the location so here it would be pool and then our event name would be not to Joe and I messed it up here and since I'm in editing I can't really uh, show what would actually work if you notice here I have example a calling example B and then example B looking for example a and example B trying to find the event but can't because it's looking at example a instead of example B if you actually see if you actually get the component correctly you'd just be able to hover over it and see that all you need to fill in is location and then the event name. And so finally here in example C, which again would just be called something like event, quest, or story, whatever you want to call the most reusable name possible, or something like game events, as I call it here. And then we're going to simply put in the location string and event name string and then we'll add defaults to them. And now we have a script that we can reuse over and over, change the location and the event name, and get the find my event so we get the event we want. This is so much better because now when we actually run it, we can find the event and event name. Oh, and we would want to, you know, rename everything and rename these scripts so we would have this game events and game event and then here we would have game functions under game events just to let you see some organization. So now if we change something like not to Joe from index zero to index two, or even if it's index 2000, we still find it. And all we have to do now is reuse this function everywhere in our game. This is how you would actually program this. And this is how you would fix pirate software's atrocious code. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any more future videos.